Hello. Okay, this is my first time live streaming on uh, using my phone. So I'm just going to try to get it set up a little bit here. Um, I hope that you all can see it and that the orientation is not... Hmm. I'm concerned that this is going to look really weird for you guys and be sideways. I'm going to start this way and we'll see what happens. Um, hmm. I feel like this is probably the better option. There we go. I think that looks better and it's more likely to actually work for you guys. Usually I use a webcam and my actual laptop so I can see. Um, I see that somebody is on live uh, watching now. If you can just give me a thumbs up to make to let me know that like the audio is working and that this looks like the right orientation, that would be great. Um, I'm just concerned because I'm using a new device to live stream today and I don't want to do the whole live stream like with the camera sideways or upside down or, you know, something that would make it look weird. So um, if you can give me a little bit of a, let's see, a thumbs up in the chat to let me know if everything is looking okay, that would be great. Um, so I am going to work on using floppy disks today. So um, I'm going to turn these into a book. Um, I have never used this size floppy disk before. Um, they're actually a lot thinner than what I remember. Okay, thank you so much for confirming that audio and video looks good. Okay, so now I can dive in without worrying. Um, Okay, so these floppy disks, they're really thin um, and they're really floppy. Uh, I've mostly used three and a quarter inch uh, diskettes, which are much harder, um, but I was given some of these uh, and I think that they're just blank. I don't think these were ever used. You can tell how old they are because the edges of the paper wrapper are um, yellowed. Uh, and I originally thought, it would be cool to make a little book with these as the covers and then somehow be able to put it back in the pocket. And I may still do that, but today I, I would definitely have to re-rig these, although they're probably so old with age that the glue might just pop. We'll have to look into that and see. Um, but I might have to either make a new pocket to slip the finished book in. Um, but for now, I'm just going to set these aside, and I kind of wanted to just share my process today um, for how I get started. Like I said, I've never used these books before, these discs before, um, so I'm just going to kind of go about my regular process, and we'll see if anything comes up that um, needs to be have I need to troubleshoot. So. I'm thinking I got some of this gridded paper for a different project I'm working on this um, fall, and I thought this would be kind of nice. I mean, I would love to have some old dot matrix printer paper. Um, if you're old enough to remember, there were there was paper that was um, it alternated between like white and green lines, um, but like big thick lines of color and white. And um, that would be amazing to have to go inside of these, but, um, and I probably could find it on eBay. But since this is kind of my first dive in, I will just use what I have. And um, I, I do have a couple others of these discs. So maybe if this one turns out okay, I'll do the next. Um, so I have regular uh, gridded paper and I have just plain white printer paper. Um, and what I want to do, the very first thing is just measure how big each disc is and then check my grain of my paper to make sure that I'm going to make my folds for my pages in the right direction of the grain. Um, this binding I'm going to do is going to be a multi-needle Coptic binding. So, um, I need to have signatures folded in half so that I can make that, uh, work. All right, so I like to use a smaller little mat here for um, measuring. And let me get a little piece of scrap paper to write down everything. 
Okay, so the width is five and a quarter. That's what I remember these being called. Um, five and a quarter, but I wasn't sure if that was just a nickname or if they really ran true to that size. And this is five and a quarter as well. So I think I want my pages to be five and an eighth by five and an eighth so that um, if there's a little variation, like to me, this little edge here looks not exactly even, it looks like it kind of bows up a little bit at this end. So I'm going to do five and an eighth by five and an eighth, um, which means that I need my piece of paper that I'm going to do, and then I would fold it here in half. I would need this to be 10 and a quarter. So hopefully my sheets of paper that I'm using, these are eight and a half by 11. So hopefully the grain will be going in the right direction. So um, the way to check the grain, the way I usually do is fold it in half one way and fold it in half the other. Um, and it's a little hard to tell on camera, but this is folding much flatter. So that's how big the loop is. And then this one, I'll show you. That's how big the loop is. So whichever one is harder to fold, which means it stays open more, that is not your grain direction. If it folds more flat, that means your grain is running this way. So unfortunately, that's not going to work for me. I want my grain to be running this way. And actually, I bet that the other paper, the grain is running in the wrong direction too. Because usually machine made paper like this, it's grain long. But let me check my other paper. Yep. Yep. These are both grain long. So now I have a decision to make. And I think because this is just a for fun book, I'm going to fold against the grain. This paper is thin enough um, that it will be fine. And it's not going to really, it's not a piece that I'm selling to a customer. It's not something that's going to be taking a lot of glue or paint or, um, like a wet medium that's, that might make it warp in a, wrong, in a weird way. There's not gonna be any glue adhered for the actual binding. Um, sometimes if you go against the grain when you're gluing stuff, um, like if I had to glue paper to a board cover and I, I have mismatched grains, that can make it warp in a weird direction. But it's just gonna be simply folded and it's also not very big. So these are all the reasons I'm going to go against the grain on this one. Um, so that makes it also better because then I can just cut a strip here and then fold these pages in half. Um, so I'm going to, let me think about this. I have to decide how many pages of plain and gridded I want to use. I usually use about five or six signatures and usually about five or six pages per signature. Um, I, this paper is really thin, so I think I'll do six signature or six pages per signature. And then I will do, let's see. Oh, if I do five pages, I could do, well, maybe this is what I'll do. So I like having, the pages make sense. So if these are my pages and my signature, the outside would be white, grid, white, grid, white. And then I could do the next signature would be grid, white, grid, white, grid, white. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I will do five pages in here and I will get these um, prepped. And then once I have maybe five or probably five signatures, I will decide whether or not I need more signatures. Um, Cause like I said, this is very thin. So I don't want it to be so thin that I can't, um, that the book looks way too thin. So I know that my, the height of my book is gonna be five and an eighth. So I'm gonna use the grid lines on my big mat here. I'm going to try to do this without bumping the camera tripod. Okay. 
So I'm just lining up my ruler on the measurements against the grid here. Okay, and then I like using a utility knife versus like a, a chopper, paper chopper. Um, I just feel like I get a better precision with that. But I know everybody has their own preferences. It does take longer to do it this way. Okay, and then I want it to be 10 and a quarter, which actually, let me, I'm going to do 10 and a quarter, and then I'm going to see how it folds. A lot of things with this, especially with unconventional covers, um, materials as covers, a lot of it, the first signature is taking my best guess as to the measurements making a prototype and then readjusting once I get that first one done. Okay. If you all have questions about what I'm doing or about bookbinding in general, why I'm using a mater certain material or not, um, please feel free to put them into the comments below. Okay, so I've got my first signature done there. And then I'm just kind of looking to see, I need to do it not looking through the camera. Um, so it actually looks good. It gives me, I'll bring it up a little bit closer, see if you can see it. It gives me, um, that measurement gives me a little bit of edge here, but it also allows for the papers to kind of um, go out a little bit when they're folded. And I have to decide about this here. I wasn't sure how I was going to deal with this, if I was just going to leave it here or if I was going to try to cut holes through the whole book. I think what I want to do actually is, I'll test it on the next one, I think I want to have the gridded paper show through. That way it looks intentional, not just like, eh, well, there's white paper here. Um, so let me do another batch of pages. This one will be outside and then... We'll just alternate these. Okay. Okay. So let me get that out of there. And then 10 and a quarter again. This is why I like to always have my numbers written down because, uh, you know, especially if you're tweaking stuff as you're going along, numbers can change and it's important to remember what you're doing. I've definitely cut uh, things wrong by not referencing my sheet of paper, um, especially when you're working with you know, a cover paper and covers, which are different sizes. Um, this book is pretty straightforward, so. Okay, so if this becomes my outer signature, let's look. Yeah, I like that. It's hard to tell on camera, but the line, the grid lines are blue. So maybe I will use a blue thread on the side as well. Um, I think that's probably what I'll do. And so just so I can show you what I was thinking about for the signatures, I'll do an outside um, of grid paper, then a signature with white paper, then I'll do another one with grid paper, white, and I'll just alternate it. That way when you're flipping through the book, it's just always alternating white paper versus grid paper, except for the, the very inside signature. Ooh, which I wonder if I have any like interesting thing I could put in there. See, I have, let me grab them. 
I have these from, these are the labels from the bigger discs, or the, I'm sorry, the harder discs, the three and a quarter inch diskettes. And I've used them in different things, but it would be kind of cool to put it in here somehow. Um, I'm going to think about that. I probably will not sew the binding today. I'm not sure. I've got to, I want to keep an eye on my time and not keep you all here too long. Um, but I would live stream sewing it in a little, uh, you know, another day. Um, but thinking about doing something on the inside of each signature could be kind of cool. If you have ideas of something kind of computer related that might be interesting to put inside, um, let me know. Or I could just leave it as is and let whoever purchases it or whoever ends up using it at the end figure out what would be the best thing for them. Okay, so I need to get these things kind of out of the way. I am really glad to see that the grid lines are all <laughs> straight. I was didn't really think about that when I first started using this, but now cutting it, um, I realized that if they were not true and straight, it would um, really drive me crazy. <laughs> so I'm very glad that they're nice and even and not, you know, slightly skewed. So this is the thickness of three signatures so far. Um, I will press them before I do the binding, but just taking a, a check in to see how thick um, I might want it. So I think this would be an ideal thickness if I were trying to fit it back into the pocket. Let's see if I can get it in here. Um, however, three signatures is not a whole lot to bind. Yeah, see that fits already, but I think maybe if I do five signatures, that would make it so that it's not too thick. Um, it would be better to, for binding to have five signatures than three, and then also um, it would not be too bulky. To um, I wouldn't have to refit this too much. It wouldn't look too odd or out of place. So I'm going to try for five signatures. So I just have two more to cut. A lot of times when I am um, creating signatures and pages by hand, um, I don't cut them quite as in bulk as I am right now. Um, but this seems to be working okay. I like to cut and fold my pages really almost individually sometimes, and it does take a lot more time. But for the live stream, I'm doing it kind of all as one big batch so that you don't have to watch me cut pages for you know, a half an hour. You notice I'm always checking and making sure that the scraps are come off cleanly before I move my ruler and my papers. And that's just one way that I can, um, I've learned over the years that if I have cut, if it's not completely cut and 
uh, I've removed my ruler. It's really hard to get it an exact cut in the same spot if I need to trim something else. So I just always make sure that everything is cut cleanly before I move my ruler. And then our last signature is going to have the gridded paper on the outside that way. If you're looking at the back cover, you'll see that grid paper again. If you hear sighing in the background, that is my puppy. She is uh, sleeping on the floor back here. So if you hear random noises, that's her. Last uh, time I was live streaming with my Instagram subscribers, she just got a bee in her bonnet and was barking a whole lot. Um, so I'll take sighing over barking any day. So this is our last signature here, and I'm just going to stack everything together and see how that looks and see what the spacing is. Oh, oh, I got panicked for a second that my pages were too long, but one of the pages was actually just stuck in the back cover here. Oops, sorry, sorry, sorry. This is the balance between having a really zoomed in camera and having my tripod like right in my face. Um, okay, so this is where I am now. I need to press these pages under weight. So I'll do that. I use boards and bricks to press stuff um, instead of a true book press, but I find it works just as well. And then um, let's look at what blue I have. I have this blue thread and I think that's going to match really well. So um, I will live stream it again and show you the sewing process. But for now, I'm going to leave off there. That way I can um, have these all pressed and ready to go um, for our next live stream. So thanks for watching and I hope that you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, feel free to put them down in the comments below. Bye.